Let's talk about price and, and try to get some, you know, a lot of this uh, comes down to can these new biofuels compete against the incumbent, which is petroleum. And uh, your co-founder of Solazyme, Harrison Dillon, said uh, in August of 2010, quote, oil that costs $1,000 per gallon to make in a pond will cost about $1.50 to $2 per gallon in the next year or so using fermentation tanks. Are you there yet? From a productivity standpoint, the answer is yes. The part of the question that requires some clarification is it depends on the cost of the input sugars. And those have been fluctuating wildly. So what we really look at now, instead of looking at the cost of production, is we look at the difference between the cost of production and the selling price. We look at the margin. Because what's happened is you've seen fluctuation on both production cost and value of the oils. And what we really care about is the margin. And so from a pr productivity standpoint, to get to those kinds of numbers in general, yes, we have reached those kinds of productivities. And Ellen Shaw, where are you price-wise? You know, where, where's your target? Or where are you now in terms of being able to deliver a, uh, a fuel that can compete with gasoline or diesel? Well, uh, our, our principal uh, contribution to this industry will not be producing a biodiesel. Uh, uh, in, in, in the short term, uh, b because I fundamentally don't believe that biodiesel is viable as a product from what I call sugar, first generation sugar. The, 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 the numbers just don't add up for me. My job is to release cheap sugar to the industry, as Jonathan said earlier, and Cadexis could actually be positioned very nicely as an enabler to this entire sector. My principal uh, target is to reduce all that biomass that two-thirds of the current production in Brazil into fermentable sugars. Because what Jonathan rightly pointed out is that the key driver of economics here is feedstock cost. And guess what? <laughs> it is with every other industry. So why should this be any different? So feedstock will make or break uh, every, every company in this sector. And if you've got diesel selling at uh, $1,100, $1,200 a tonne, and sugar input there is four, five, whatever. And, and remember, sugar is expensive if it's high quality, and it's cheap if it's low quality. But low quality means impurities, and they kill the very technologies that we've got. Fermentation microbes don't like impurities. With maximum yields being 30 35%, ethanol's only 65% theoretical yield, you're going to have to have a real, real close look at the cost of your feedstock if you're going to make any money in this industry. And so, you know, I'm an industrialist, right? So I speak as an industrialist. I'm not a VC by any stretch. So there's no hype with me. You know, this is about n nuts and bolts. It's, it's going to come down to basic economics. And the feedstock will drive profitability or will kill us. And therefore, my job is to try and get the feedstock as low as possible. And the bottom line is, bio uh, second generation cellulosic sugars are about a tenth in terms of contribution to what I call first generation sugars, whether it's corn, starch, or sugar. That factor of a tenth will enable this industry. So that's my contribution, and these guys hopefully then will make lots of money and we'll all be happy. But you also believe there's a lot of um, uh, games played with price forecasts. You call them lies in, in this industry. Well, I wouldn't say that sitting here. Uh, I think there's a lot of hype. Uh, I think there's been too much hype. Uh, you know, I, I, speak, I speak for the industry as much as I do for Cadexis. I've been on the, at the board of Bio for the best part of 10 years. I, I, I see myself as a, as a, as a, a vocal, a vocal a voice for the, the bio transformation, the, the, the sugar economy. I've been working in this area for 20 years. Uh, I fundamentally believe that the biology is the technology enabler of the 21st century and the last century was the age of chemistry. So we're all in the right place doing the right thing. Uh, too much hype, largely being driven around a VC pumped up bubble, uh, has not helped this sector. What we don't need is high profile failures at a time when we're trying to get traction. That doesn't help the industry. Uh, what we don't need is uh, a lot of government money going into companies to build plants for underdeveloped technology. And there's been a number of those in this sector. That doesn't help. You know, if we're all pragmatic and we take a deep breath and we all get the technology right and then build the plants for the technology, not the other way around, then eventually we will create something very special here. But uh, hype, hype uh, 
serves their purpose for certain individuals, for me, it's just getting in the way. 